So, going on two weeks ago, I put out a video detailing what I was enjoying for my pick of the top 10 weapons in Warzone 2. That was right after launch of Warzone 2, and we gave the best builds to go along with that. Since then, we've learned, we've seen some weapons that may have overtaken some of those rankings and more, so today I wanted to not necessarily re-examine the top 10 listing that we put out then. Instead, we'll probably reevaluate that a new top 10 around the mid-season update, just about two weeks away, actually probably going live in two weeks with that video. But instead, I want to take today a look at the recommended five long-range builds for you that you can do really well with. I'm talking minimal recoil, or in some cases, perceived recoil at a distance, as well as packing a punch to get the job done. Today, we're going to be examining the long-range meta, per se, of Warzone 2 and the builds you should be trying out to maximize your play experience. As we go along, drop your thoughts below. What weapons are you liking so far in Warzone 2? Doesn't necessarily have to be long-range, but what's your preferred build or builds that you guys enjoy? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. If you enjoyed the video, you'll find it out on Insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. With the last one, we eclipsed 4,000 likes, so let's shoot for 3,000 likes here on this one. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay today with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ. If you'd like to join the community and help us out on that road to 600,000 subscribers. And finally, reminder, code ESPRESSO gets you 20% off your order at G Fuel. Some cool flavors are upcoming this month. And of course, it can make for a great stocking stuff for holiday gift. But that said, let's talk about that long range meta play. So, Long range. In defining our builds, we're going to have to set a few parameters for understanding our builds. For long range, I'm considering this anywhere from 30 to 50 meters now. Obviously, you don't want to challenge something that's like 200 meters away with any of these builds or honestly, most engagements at that distance anyway. But we're also not focusing on close quarters combat with this one. We're not going for explicitly clearing buildings or anything like that. So for those, you'd want to run a Lockman sub, Vaznev, Fennec, stuff like that. But we're taking into account what is probably a larger majority of gunfights. Almazra is a massive map, and when you consider that a lot of the map traversal will include only using the environment as cover, long range play is a crucial component of staying alive and winning games. Additionally, with these builds in particular, I want to offer a bit of builds that can favor power or control, and in some cases, both. Things that are relatively easy to manage with your recoil while also packing punch where possible. So weapons may not have the snappiest ADS, sprint to fire, stuff like that, and other mobility attributes, but we make up for that in areas of control and power. Additionally, as we'll talk about with our first two weapons, there's a bit of an oddity here that you might want to consider with some optics and recoil, but we'll get to that in a second. So let's start out with two that may be a somewhat surprise tackling the fact that they're both absurdly easy to use, but also talking about that odd visual recoil attribute. First one, I'd recommend the M4. Just like in Modern Warfare 2019, the M4 is a weapon that is insanely easy to control, pick up, and master. Now, is it the absolute best choice? When we compare it to even just these other weapons in the list, no, I'd probably place this at maybe number five, but it's very easy to use, very easy to control, and as such, it can help you get some kills at distance. Dealing 28 damage per round to the chest and upwards of 39 damage per round to the head, you can theoretically make it a seven round kill on a fully armored enemy, which isn't necessarily the best, but again, easy to control nature, it's definitely viable. Especially at distance, this makes this a nice weapon to have in your arsenal. Now for the build, I'd recommend the high tower 20 inch barrel, offering bullet velocity, damage range, and recoil control, which is exactly what we want when we're looking for weapon builds at range. The Zulu 60 suppressor, or if you want to go for the Echo List 80, both are viable options. The Echo List doesn't offer up recoil control though, whereas the Zulu 60 offers that sound suppression, bullet velocity, recoil control, and smoothness, but offers a slight penalty to range, which is why we take that barrel to get it back. The FTAC Ripper 56 grip, which offers stabilization for aiming idle sway and recoil. The 60 round magazine for additional ammo, and surprisingly perhaps, the Cronin Mini Pro Optic, or that red slash blue dot of your choice. This may seem like an odd choice for range, but you may have seen some of your favorite streamers, creators, and such using these for long range, and there's a reason, because when you tune this for the far eye position, it brings that optic a bit further out from your viewpoint. This then allows for more control on that visual recoil. Visual recoil is something you'll really see a difference with when you look at or use higher magnification optics. But with a red dot, when visibility is still good, you have that feel of control a bit more because your screen isn't bouncing as much. So with things like a 5.5 times optic and above where you'll see that visual bounce with every single shot and therefore you could overcompensate instinctively. Tuning wise for the high tower barrel, I'd tune for recoil steadiness while we've talked about how the intricacies of tuning have some oddities where maxing things out aren't always the best. Maxing this in particular doesn't hurt it too much, but I'd aim for a plus 0.32 to plus 0.34 inch increase in the length for damage range, not maxing that out because any further and you'll actually lose a bit of that positive addition here to your weapon. The Zulu 60 muzzle, tune that plus 0.63 around there in ounces towards recoil smoothness and maxing out the idle stability is totally fine. And the Ripper 56 grip, you can max this out for recoil stabilization and aiming idle stability. Next weapon I wanna talk about is that that offers a bit more in terms of damage, but it's still incredible for control. Now, is it the best of these in terms of 
of damage? No, we'll get there in a second with the next three, but this is the TAC-56. Now, the TAC-56 was in our top 10, and I fully believe that it still has a place there, but this is incredibly solid for medium and long-range play, offering up 34 damage per round at base and a 43 to the head. That's a potential for a six-shot kill at a fully armored enemy, which is huge in gunfights. Now, for this build, I'd recommend the Tundra Pro Barrel. There's only two options with the TAC-56, so naturally, at a distance, you want to go for something that increases damage range and bullet velocity. That's what the Tundra Pro Barrel does. The Echoless 80, again, or if you want to go to the Zulu 60, you can. It really comes down to if you want to sacrifice that additional damage range or gain it back. I personally think that the TAC-56 has incredible control to begin with, so I don't know that you necessarily need the control the Zulu 60 ends up offering. Then, high velocity ammunition, 60 round magazine, and again, the Cronin Mini Pro Optic. Now, this we, of course, naturally sacrificed a little bit more in terms of control. No under barrel, no stock, no rear grip or anything like that, but it's because it's incredibly easy to manage while offering still a decent damage over range. Now, for tuning, I'd recommend, again, that far eye position flinch resistance you can max out as well. The Tundra Pro Barrel, I'd max out damage range and recoil steadiness. Again, you don't lose too much on trying to pinpoint anything between zero and that max value for both of those. Now, on the Echoless 80 muzzle, I'd recommend about a plus 1.06 ounce increase here. Anything above that, there's not a whole ton of room to work with there, but it doesn't really offer too much benefit by comparison. And for your high velocity rounds, you can end up maxing out your bullet velocity, but go around the 0.6 to 64 mark on that increase to the damage range. If you max it out, you will slightly lose a little bit, but not a whole ton. But if we're going for the max possible attributes here with it, you don't want to max it out just yet. Now, next up, we're going to talk about the Wrap H. The next three are actually going to be LMGs. The LMG sort of meta is starting to be defined a little bit here as that long range play. But the Wrap is a very interesting one because it has a great fire rate by comparison, but also it's got a great amount of control control if you know how to kit it out right if you can work it well for this one we're not actually going to run any sort of barrel here on this the range itself isn't bad on the wrap as is so you don't need to sacrifice a barrel to extend that damage range and bullet velocity instead you want to try and mitigate the recoil as much as possible because with a higher rate of fire by default you'll have a bit more bounce over distance so for this we're going to run the polar fire s or if you want to add even more control but sacrifice a bit in that damage range you want to do the zulu 60 suppressor this offering up bullet velocity some control depending on which muzzle you end up taking also dependent damage range and sound suppression for a grip you want to take the bo52 grip which will offer up recoil steadiness stabilization as well as some steadiness for your aiming idle sway and walking steadiness you want the high velocity ammunition you want the lockman tcg 10 grip which does offer more recoil control and then to round things out i'd recommend the sc sro 7 optic this offering up a bit more in terms of magnification but not necessarily the point of something like a vlk four times or a 5.5 times something that will offer up a lot of visual bounce in that visual recoil but also not at the point where it is just only pinpoint precise and something at a distance that you might not find too favorable as say a red or blue dot for tuning for that sz sro 7 optic you want the far eye position maxed out but then for flinch resistance tuning towards that you can go to around the 1.56 ounce addition it's almost maxing out what you'll see with the accuracy but it keeps handling whereas if you max out the flinch resistance you'll get a bit more in that accuracy but you'll sacrifice the rest of that handling that you could otherwise have the polar fire s you can end up tuning not necessarily all the way out for bullet velocity as well as recoil smoothness on this one just the way that it works out with this weapon again losing some attributes if you fully max it out for the grip they can max this out for the recoil stabilization and aiming idle stability the high velocity rounds i've actually been playing around with this maxed out on recoil smoothness as well as steadiness so that i have a bit more control as opposed to that again additional damage range and bullet velocity which we don't necessarily need because the wrap is pretty solid as is and then finally the lockman tcg 10 grip will max that out for recoil steadiness and then try and bring a little bit of sprint to fire into the equation there again around the 0 0.15 0 0.18 mark here on the subtraction with the width Overall, this is going to be a weapon build that offers up a lot of control, but also a lot of rounds that can be put into your enemy. So definitely nice to have at a distance. Beyond that, we're going to talk about the RPK, the second best in terms of pure damage, offering up 38 damage per round to the chest. And then with the headshots, a 52 damage per round. So that equating out, of course, to a five shot kill if you can land all headshots, though that's probably not going to happen. But theoretically, it's pretty nice to have. Now for the RPK, it's going to run very similar to the Wrap H and of course then the next 
weapon that we'll talk about here of the Rao, but we'll start with the Polar Fire S again for that damage range, recoil smoothness, and bullet velocity, offering a little bit up more on that. The FTAC Ripper 56 for aiming idle stability, recoil stabilization, and hip fire accuracy. The high velocity ammunition, the Demo X2 grip, which will offer up that recoil control, and then that SZ SRO7 optic. Again, giving something that offers a little magnification, but nothing that really takes you too far out of the play and really severely limits yourself with that visual recoil. Tuning for the optic starting there, of course, the far eye position is what you want, max that out. For the flinch resistance, tuning towards that, you'll want about a plus 1.62, 1.64 again in that range, so you can almost max out that accuracy just by like a hair, but also keep the handling properties intact. Moving to the tuning of the Polar Fire S muzzle, for the recoil smoothness, you'll want to end up offering up about a plus 0.9 to 1 ounce addition to that weight, so you can end up maxing those recoil controlling properties, but also sacrificing as little as possible from the handling. The FTAC Ripper, you can end up adding about a plus 0.25 inch length increase to the aiming idle stability. The recoil stabilization, you'll want to go and add about a 0.5 ounce increase to the weight, just again, so you maximize stuff out where possible, but not sacrificing anything that isn't necessary. For the high velocity ammunition, you'll want to make sure you have your recoil smoothness tuned to where you subtract about 0.5 grams on the weight. Then for your recoil steadiness, you want to tune towards that. Again, taking about 0.54 grams off that load. The Demo X2 grip, I'd end up adding 0.2 inches to that width and also just under the max of the recoil steadiness, about the 0.95, 0.97 ounce increase to the weight. But the RPK, a really nice build for long range. Now, the final weapon we'll talk about is the RAL MG. Now, the RAL is statistically speaking, the best weapon here for range, the best thing that can pack the most punch. But at the same time, it is going to be something that with a slower fire rate, more recoil, it's a bit tougher to control, a bit tougher to master. But if you can end up tackling this, it's definitely going to be your weapon of choice, I would say, for long range. For this, I'd end up running the 21-inch EXF Rhino Barrel, that offering up recoil control and bullet velocity. The Demo Field Pro Barrel ends up offering damage range and bullet velocity, but it's definitely nice to have that additional recoil control as opposed to that damage range. You're still gonna be solid without that damage range addition. One thing that I'd recommend is that Talon 16 suppressor, which does sacrifice a bit in that range, as opposed to say the FTAC Reaper, which would offer up damage range, but the Talon offers that recoil control. And again, with the RAL having so much kick, if you hold this down, if you hold the trigger down at its base, it's gonna kick up quite a bit. But if you can control that in any way possible, I'd say take it. Then I'd run the high velocity magazine, the Tip 40 grip, which offers up recoil control. And then again, that SZ SRO7 optic to control that visual recoil. For tuning, I'd go with the optic again, far position, max that out. And then for the flinch resistance, add about a 1.65 ounce adjustment to that weight. For the barrel, I'd end up adjusting the recoil steadiness, adding 0.41 pounds to the weight. And then for the damage range, tuning that, adding about a 0.31 inch increase to that length. The Talon 16 suppressor, I'd end up adding about a 0.95 ounce increase to the weight. and a about a 0.44 increase to the length, again, to maximize the potential of getting a little bit more out of that, but also not sacrificing too much in the other attributes of the weapon. The high velocity rounds, I'd end up adding a 0.5 gram increase to the weight, as well as a 6.12 gram increase to the load. So you can end up again, taking a bit more in that damage range and bullet velocity, but not sacrificing too much in terms of that control. And then finally, for the stip grip, I'd add about a 0.66 ounce increase to the weight any further, and you're gonna see a steep drop off in terms of that handling, but not really too much benefit in terms of that recoil. But also then for the aiming idle stability, I'd tune towards that by adding about 0.36 inches to the width of the grip overall. But that just about does it here. And that is what I think is your top five weapons for range within Warzone 2 as of right now. And of course, all things are subject to change. The nice part is that there still really isn't any clearly defined meta. So there very well could be other weapons that we could fit in this list. And just in the interest of time, we're not going to extend this to a top Top 10 list. That's something we'd be talking about here way too long, getting too nerdy with tuning and stuff like that. So wanted to keep this fairly simple, fairly straightforward here and give you guys the best five weapons I would say for range. So that said, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of this? Do you like any of these weapons that we listed off here? Anything that you would say is one of your favorites for long range? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. We'll keep you the day with all of it. So if you guys are at all interested in joining the community. I'd love to have you. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Modest Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.